The model penal code proposed to the states that they recognize an affirmative mistake of law defense, which had never existed at common law. It reads, a belief that conduct does not legally constitute an offense is a defense when the defendant acts in reasonable reliance upon an official statement of the law afterward determined to be invalid or erroneous, contained in a statute or an official interpretation of the public officer or body charged by law with responsibility for the interpretation, administration, or enforcement of the law defining the offense. The dissent in Moraro points out that the highlighted language, afterward determined to be invalid, was omitted from the statute adopted by the state of New York. The New York Criminal Code provision Moraro was charged under had never been determined to be invalid, so the majority of Moraro held that the defendant was not entitled to the affirmative defense. Only in the narrowest of circumstances will reliance on one's own reading of a statute furnish a defense. Essentially, the defendant must be able to show that his reading was correct, but the statute itself was invalid. The fourth clause looks possibly more widely available. Reasonable reliance on an official interpretation of the public officer charged by law with enforcing the statute as a defense under the model penal code. Between us, I think this is a terrible idea. Because it is such a terrible idea, I am glad that few jurisdictions have adopted this proposal in any form. Why is it so terrible? Let me tell you why. In olden days, there was a small group of Cuban emigres associated with the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency, the CIA. Pictured here is one of them, Bernard Barker by name. This group of emigres came to be known as the Watergate Burglars. One of their CIA contacts, a certain E. Howard Hunt, recruited Barker and his associates to break into the headquarters of the Democratic National Committee to look for intelligence vital to the national security. In fact, what Hunt wanted was compromat, that is, dirt, that might assist President Nixon's re-election campaign. Barker was convicted of burglary. On appeal, his counsel tried to raise a model penal code style reliance on official statement defense. Barker would testify that Hunt had assured him that what he was asked to do was not a crime. The action was a matter of national security and had been approved at the highest levels. As indeed it had. The break-in was the brainchild of John Mitchell, Attorney General of the United States who later went to prison himself for his role in the Watergate and other burglaries. Hadn't Barker reasonably relied on an official statement of the law by the public officer charged with its enforcement? Reasonableness is typically for the jury to decide. The D.C. Circuit, uh, though it did not directly rule on the issue, seemed skeptical. It is easy to see why. Allowing defendants like Barker to present such a defense would give officials like John Mitchell tremendous power. They could effectively pardon crimes in advance of their commission simply by making a reasonably convincing case to the actor that there are special grounds, such as national security, for committing acts that otherwise would be crimes. Not even the president's pardon power operates prospectively. Speaking of pardons, think of this more recent case. Former President Trump recently complained to Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger about the certification of Georgia's electoral votes for President Biden. I won this election by hundreds of thousands of votes. There's no way I lost Georgia. But the Fulton County ballots are corrupt. And you're going to find that they are, which is totally illegal. It is more illegal for you than it is for them because you know what they did and you're not reporting it. That's a criminal, that's a criminal offense. And you can't let it happen. 
and you are letting it happen. You know, I mean, I'm notifying you that you're letting it happen. So look, all I want to do is this. I just want to find 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have because we won the state. And there's, there's nothing wrong with saying that, Brad. There's nothing wrong with saying that, you know, um, you've recalculated. A fact finder could conclude that the former president, as the chief law enforcement officer of the United States, was advising Rasfensberger that his finding the needed votes would not constitute a violation of federal law. Raffensperger stood firm, but what if he had given the then president a break and certified a Trump victory? Suppose Raffensperger were subsequently prosecuted for violating the federal statute that makes it a felony for a state official to render a false vote tabulation. In this hypothetical case, should the Georgia Secretary of State be permitted to try to persuade a juror, he just needs one, that he had reasonably relied on an official statement by the public officer charged by law with responsibility for the enforcement of that statute? 